recording timer is set. All right, everyone, welcome to numero number six. It is Saturday, 123. Uh, I just came from Walmart and my car AC is not working, so I'm about to get that fixed, but I've been needing to get that fixed for a long time. Anyways, this one is going to be, I say this, I'm going to keep saying this every single time. This one's going to be a good one. This one, every single one are getting better and better. If you're watching this, that means the last episode was Ashley Brackett, the dancer. Um, she's not just a dancer, she's an amazing person. So give her some love. This so next person, uh, I don't want to say he's a best friend. I don't want to say he's a kind of brother. I uh, got to know each other for 10 plus years, honestly. The more I think about it, the more I feel older. But welcome, Brooks, Brooks Hill, the man of many titles, the king of the hill, um, the one only in the hill. And I'll explain that recently just graduated from ECU online, which is crazy, yeah. lax player. So yeah, Brooks, pretty much, Glenn, who are you, man? How are you, how are you doing? Um, well, first of all, I got a uh, tough act to follow up. I'm following up a NCAA national champion <laughs> and award-winning artist, uh -huh. a doctor of dental science uh -huh. dental surgery, and a vice president of a company. <laughs> and an award-winning dancer. So, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, no pressure at all. Holy cow. Tough exactly. act to follow. Exactly. Yeah. You imagine the next person is going to have to follow after you. <laughs> it just gets better and better. This might be a plus. This might be a, this might be a filler arc. <laughs> yeah, man. So who are you, man? Um, okay, so uh, I'm Brooks Hill. I am class of 2020 alumni at East Carolina University. I just graduated with my bachelor's of science degree in communication with a concentration in journalism mm -hmm. and a minor in sports studies. Right now I work with the Wilson Tobbs, a mm -hmm. minor league baseball team in the Coastal Plain League. Where's Wilson for, I'm pretty sure people know where it is, but let's just say somebody has no idea where. So Wilson is Essentially, if you know where I-95 runs through North Carolina, you're in Wilson. Let's just say like, that'd be the easiest way. Wilson's about halfway between Greenville and Raleigh. Mm -hmm. So it's like a nice little middle ground. And the interstate doesn't run exactly right through Wilson, but it's really darn close to it. So I'd say that's where it is. I work with them in the uh, broadcast and video production department, mm -hmm. the side of things this summer. So... That's what I do. I'll say that's what I'm doing right now. Right. Uh, just hanging out at home right now as long as I can. <laughs> yeah. So if you're watching this like post everything, I'm pretty sure you're probably seeing how we've been having the biggest Cinco de Mayo, St. Patrick's, Mother's Day, graduation, birthday party, party, whatever happening. But yeah, this is uh, during COVID time. I believe gyms are actually supposed to be opening in like a week. So that's good. But want to go start all the way from the beginning. If you don't know Brooks, he's a wealth of knowledge of a lot of things. One of the things being sports, um, not only like sports that he plays in, but sports that he doesn't play in. And he can be able to just to tell you, not like general information, but to the T, precise information. Um, and I'll definitely give him the credit. That's where I've learned all my sports from. Um, but I want to start all the way from the beginning. So how, how's life going up? Like family, um, you know, and I know some of these answers, of course, because it's getting to a brother of mine, yeah. but you know, do you have any siblings, et cetera? Yeah. So I am 22 years old. I am an only child. My, uh, my parents ha uh, had me in 1998 mm -hmm. and it's, you know, it's not a secret. They kind of got the late start to having kids and they decided that, you know, they were uh, one and done. Mm -hmm. So we have lived in Wake Forest all 22 years. We've moved one time mm. when I was going, the summer going into eighth grade, we moved from, let's say like the, the Wake Forest high school side of town to the Heritage High School side of town. Ah, uh, okay, so that's not that bad. So yeah, it really didn't like affect me really all like that much. Like I had a core group of friends like that you know you would hang out with like on the weekends and you know some days after school you know playing different sports playing video games together um and then we moved in summer going into eighth grade so like I kind of stopped seeing them a little bit a couple times I get to go back and see them they'd still invite me to come to stuff mm -hmm. but like when you don't like at that kind of age like when you don't have a car you're kind of limited to what your parents can and can't do right. so 
but that really didn't affect like my, it didn't affect like, luckily it's like a small thing. Like I used to say like, that was like the biggest thing that happened like in my life was like taken away like from them. Mm-hmm. But, like it wasn't like we moved States where we didn't know anybody. Right. Or countries. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I still went to, I stayed at the same school. I went to North Raleigh Christian Academy for 13 years. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was very lucky with that. Actually, I think a lot of people don't know is, I didn't get into North Raleigh like right at the beginning of like the start of kindergarten. Uh-huh. I actually, my first day of uh, school, like ever, like in kindergarten was at Jones Dairy Elementary, <laughs> which is actually ironically now like closer to my house now than when right. I started kindergarten just because yeah. like, like all the schools have been like so many schools have been built over in the last 20 years. So how was life when you were younger? Like how was that being like an only child? For me, like I'm the youngest out of four. So only child is, you know, it's got pros and cons. Mm -hmm. Pros are you don't have to share anything with anybody. That's true. Uh, You get all the attention. (laughs) Cons are you get all the attention. (laughs) And you really can't share with anybody. Mm -hmm. So like if I wanted to go... I don't know if I wanted to like, I couldn't go really go out and throw the football. Like if my dad, like if my dad was busy, I didn't have, I couldn't like go throw the football unless like one of my friends wanted to Mm -hmm. like a brother can or something like that. So, but I mean, like I really, I don't have like any complaints. Mm -hmm. Like I've made great friends who I treat like family now. So I really don't see being like the only time you think that you're an only child is like when you're at home, like when you're off at school, everything like that, you're with friends Mm-hmm. got a roof sometimes you have a roommate which is like having a brother like when I was living in the dorms mm-hmm. the first time like it was it was kind of crazy because everyone's like oh like Brooks, like how are you gonna do like having like a roommate like you've never like you've never had that before mm-hmm. I was like it's literally fine you know I just kind of imagine like you know it's just like going to an overnight camp somewhere exactly it's just an, instead of a week it's more months yeah like I've had bunk beds before like I've had bunk beds before when I went to like camp will run stuff like that Mm -hmm. and then we didn't even bunk like we didn't bunk our beds in college like me and uh, my first two roommates so it was pretty like I probably wouldn't be the person I am today if I wasn't an only child Mm -hmm. and but there's probably some things that could have been different if I did have a sibling growing up but like I'm not complaining about it at all like fine I'm living life it is what it is (laughs) Mm -hmm. so Growing up, I, how is NRCA? Because I've had, um, when I was my senior year of high school, I remember we had like 30 or 40 people who just came out of nowhere from NRCA to Wakefield. And then we also have like vice versa. And I've heard things about it. Like I, I, know, I know it's a school, of course. Um, and I drive by it all the time when I, when I used to go to the Y to work out. Well, currently not right now because of everything. But how was going to NRCA? And then like, how was it different than other public schools? And, you know, what are the pros and cons of that? Oh, yeah. So... In RCA, so right actually right now, and it has been probably the past couple of years. Uh, in RCA is the largest K through 12 school in Wake County, or the large, like, largest private school in Wake County. It does all K through 12, not like um, Cardinal Gibbons, or like Thales or whatever. Just high school, right? And so in RCA is non-denominational, hmm. so it's not like you have to be a certain denomination of faith to be enrolled at the school. Mm-hmm uh very you know and ac- you know it's academically challenging it is like prep sc- it's like preparatory school mm-hmm. i will say uh sm- obviously smaller than what a public school graduation like what graduation class is and i remember at the time i had the largest graduating class at nrca history with 129 when i graduated wow I mean, it's got like, it's, you know, I think the highest one they've had is like 145. So your graduation was probably like that. I, I mean, shoot. I mean, the guy who spoke at commencement for high school graduation took his time. <laughs> I, remember, I remember like my stomach growling and like the girl sitting next to me at graduation started laughing. <laughs> I was like, yo, I did not think it was going to take this long. <laughs> like he got up there. Like, you know, you know, you like you have the high school choir sing like the like the jazz ensemble, like play a song, mm-hmm. everything like that. I'm like, OK, like we're good. You know, the superintendent said some stuff. I'm like, all right, here we go. Like time to stand up, walk across the stage. Mm-hmm. 
and he's like, all right, now I'd like to welcome our guest speaker. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Speed vote. So, so with that, was it like, what are some common misconceptions, like good or bad, that people have about NRCA? That okay. Are, that are like um, not true. Like top three. Okay, common misconception mm-hmm. is, mm, I'm trying to think. I got to think about the best way to word this. Mm-hmm. Okay, so number one is probably everyone's just like snotty. The one number one is, you know, you go to a prep school, you're snotty, mm-hmm. you're rich, which right. is not true for everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, some people, unfortunately, I was blessed. Like my family was blessed with the opportunity to put me through private school. Mm-hmm. And obviously, we, you know, now that I have a diploma from college, yeah, you're probably really seeing the benefits of it now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, number like that's just, you know, that's the stereotype is rich people think they're better than other people. Mm-hmm which I mean, I don't think it's true. I mean, like all my friends were, I think we're all pretty down to earth people mm-hmm. and you like, you wouldn't know that some, like some people now you wouldn't know they went to private school That's true. after college. Yeah. So let's see. Number two. Okay. Number two would be that. And maybe it's like a bad stereotype, but like essentially like everybody who does private, like some, like some people in private school actually have to like some people at NRCA have this mindset is like, Oh, because like I go to private school, like my stuff is harder than your stuff. Mm, the title. Yeah. Which you, some like it has some like it has some credit because mm-hmm. it is like a you know it is a college preparatory school, mm-hmm. but you can't discredit what something was like somebody else is doing like at a different school. Right. You know, like AP history is still AP history. You take really actually yeah yeah you take the you take the same AP exam. Right. Whether you're at Heritage High or you're at North Raleigh. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's, that's a bad one, I would definitely say. And then probably the third one is that, like, private school people, like, can't play, like, can't play sport, like, can't compete mm-hmm. in sports. Like, they just, like, they're not at the same level. As, like, high school, like, as, like, some high school, like, high school. In some sort you know, in some places, that's true. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that North Raleigh could go out there and beat Heritage or Wake Forest or Millbrook <laughs> or Wakefield in football. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't. But that's not saying that you could have people who play football for North Raleigh also play football for Wake Forest or Heritage. So, so do you think, you know, like then with your sports, like where did that come from? Because the one you have, it's not like a natural, like there's people who know sports and then there's you, like there's a difference. Huh. Like there's like, there's people who think that they know sports, but you really know sports, not for like the, when someone says like, Oh, like, I wonder who this player is, like, know, like being able to say the answer, but you generally know it because it's something that you follow and you're passionate about and you can see it in like your ethic as well too. So where did that come from? Like where that sports hunger come from? I'd honestly say like all my sports knowledge has really come from my dad, like asking me questions uh-huh. like over the years being like, Oh, like, do you know this? Like, do you know who that coach is? Like, do you know like what that school's mascot is? Mm-hmm. And I would say, no, like, why would I know? Like, why would I know that? <laughs> and then he tells me and then, honestly like it just it's like it's stuck in there until it comes back up again uh-huh. honestly funny that you should say that uh, back in greenville like i have some teammates and we're you know we're talking about sports everything like that and people are getting into an arguments and i chime in and say something and then my friend eason goes okay well brooks just said it so we're gonna go with that answer <laughs> uh, that's awesome <laughs> so that's just like the passion i honestly like i didn't play team sports until my first team sport was when i was in fifth grade how was that uh it was exciting it was flag football and I was all like my parents always asked me like if I wanted to play sports like as a kid and I was like little league baseball or like soccer Mm -hmm. and I always said no because I was afraid the coach was like gonna yell at me for like messing up Mm -hmm. until like finally in fifth grade I finally did it Uh, and I played flag football because at the time I was like severely underweight for Mm -hmm. someone who's my age I mean I still am underweight now for someone Mm -hmm. who's 22 but back in elementary school, it was like a lot worse. Mm-hmm. So like, I wasn't going to weigh enough to play tackle football. So I had to play flag football. How'd that feel? Like how'd that feel to, I guess, like have a block where you, I guess there, I don't want to say there's a solution, but there's a solution that you probably don't like you go to something and you kind of get like a no. Well, I really never got like the hard no. I just, I was kind of like self-aware like at the time because like, my dad would always tell me stories about like how he played like pop Warner football mm-hmm. um 
and talked about, you know, you can choose to weigh yourself like with pads or without pads. And like, you have to be like this weight, like for this age, mm-hmm. everything like that. And I, it was no secret that I knew like I wasn't heavy at all. So it's not like I went out and like, and told everybody like, oh, I'm going to go out for football. And then like, they're like, Oh, you don't, you don't weigh enough. Like we just chose like flag football. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I kind of just rolled with it for two, I did two years of, or two seasons of flag football, like a fall and spring. Yeah. And eventually I got to play when like, you know, school football comes around, there's no weight limits. So, and then NRCA was set up and, you know, kind of circling back to the NRCA thing. I fully believe like if I had not gone to NRCA, I would have never played football because yeah. I believe I would have gone to like the public. So I would have been districted to go to heritage high. Yeah. And I, believe I probably would have been like turned away mm-hmm. not actually I don't know if they do cuts like on their football team so either I would have been cut or you know, they would have tried to like make me quit mm-hmm. something like that like I would have never seen the playing time mm-hmm. so NRCA kind of gave me the opportunity to play football you know fell in love with it and I, I was the smallest one I was the smallest one weight wise all six years and then actually sophomore year I wasn't the sh- smallest one height wise anymore mm-hmm. uh one person who I'm friends with to this day was a little bit shorter than me, but he was a beef tank. Let me tell you that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, I went out and honestly, because I played football seventh grade year, I kind of got like an in with like the popular kids at NRCA. Mm-hmm. And was that like a shift? It kind of, it kind of was like, it was like my in group, like you could tell like they respected me more. Mm-hmm. Or I can see it now that they respected me more. It's like, Oh wow. Like, he's the smallest one out there and he's like trying like he's like you can tell like he's how hard he's like trying to be like a part of everything mm-hmm. so it was like it was good mm-hmm. I don't have like any complaints about it and then honestly like those guys like became like my friends and then I'm the one who introduced a lot of those guys to playing lacrosse in right. high school and so where that where's lacrosse come from did you just like one day pick up a stick and, and just the power came so my cousin played <clears throat> high school lacrosse for Wakefield mm-hmm. And, oh, excuse me. And I went to my, actually, ironically enough, my first lacrosse camp, first time I ever picked up a stick was at a YMCA camp in fifth grade. Mm, back, when, back when the YMCA had sports camps. Mm-hmm. And the coach, like they brought in the Wakefield High coach to lead it. Mm-hmm. Um, because of the, at the time, the Y didn't have anybody who knew lacrosse. Mm-hmm. So, that's where it came. That's where it came from. And, you know, we played like little, like half field. There was only like 10 of us. Mm-hmm. We didn't, we didn't play with helmets or gloves or anything like that. So we were just trying to figure it out. And, you know, someone told like, Oh, someone told my dad and it's kind of, you know, kind of stereotypical, mm-hmm. but he's just like, Hey, he's like, lacrosse is like white man's football. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Brooks has a chance. Like Brooks has a chance to excel at that. If he like, if he's like going to think about going into football, um you know slightly slightly racist but mm-hmm. like it, like i didn't tell like i never like saw it that way right and it's you just kind of took it and ran with it yeah and you know it's kind of like it's, it's a fact that lacrosse is a predominantly caucasian dominated sport mm-hmm. um don't know why that is but i love it mm-hmm. and so i kind of i liked it a whole bunch and i went to camps i started going to the duke lacrosse camp over summer Mm-hmm. with their coaching staff and then I got on my first team when I was in eighth grade I was playing club ball did that for a year you know NRCA didn't have a team yet we were, ironically enough hmm. we, like wait for that I know private school not playing lacrosse right yeah I feel like in the movies that's like the number one sport yeah you, see. Like a, you know stereotypical private school sport <laughs> yeah and that like fencing kind of stuck like ninth grade, I really didn't do any. Like right, ninth grade, I just went to ninth and tenth grade. I went to overnight camps. Let me tell you what, overnight sports camps is mm-hmm. like the best thing ever. You all just play sports all the time. Yeah, like literally, <laughs> like, honestly, I don't. I like looking back now. I do not know how like my body handled doing three sessions a day. Like you had a morning. So like, all right, just paint the picture. So you do lacrosse. This is like freshman. This is just after like freshman year, Brooks. Mm-hmm. So you have wake up, breakfast, morning session, come back, shower. They always use like you just like shower after every session. 
because then you don't so you don't get diaper rash mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, after and you know what i was like i'm not gonna get diaper rash and little I, did he know <laughs> yeah, little did i know and come back shower lunch afternoon session then you have after like afternoon you have like a long like three or four hours like where you can hang out and you got to like walk across like deuce campus and like they had like a basketball court, like an outdoor basketball court, so like mm-hmm. people could go play. Uh, they had like the common rooms open, so like foosball, ping pong, TV, stuff like that. And then you had a night, you know, you had dinner, and then you had night session. Mm-hmm. And then after that, you had pizza at the end. So like you're doing like six hours of lacrosse a day. And honestly, I don't know how like ninth grade Brooks like kept up with that. Like I was kind of thinking about that this week. Uh-huh. Like that's quite crazy. I remember one time. Uh, I tore my knee up so that they had turf fields uh, that some level, like sometimes you get to play on, they would rotate like what field, like every age group plays. Cause they had like some elementary kids, like middle school kids. And then they have high school kids, mm-hmm. but they would rotate like which field, like you play on like every session. So like one time we were on the turf field and like, I was going for a ground ball and I got clocked in the back. I remember it. <laughs> and I went like, it's like a slip and like on turf, it's like a slip and slide. Uh-huh. Like, you just, slide for a couple yards I like look up like my leg like my left leg is like bleeding down on the front and I remember the cool thing about that was is I got to go see the athletic trainer after like the session was over uh-huh. and like she like disinfected it and like wrapped it like in a bandage and then she drove me in the golf cart back to the dorms uh-huh. which is probably like a half mile walk like from the fields to the dorms where we were staying and I was just like oh like I got to drive in the golf I was like I got to ride in the golf cart <laughs> a little check so yeah. You mentioned the Y earlier, and uh, I, I feel like I think you've spent a little bit of time at the Y. I think so, maybe, maybe a year or two. But can yeah, you kind of explain, one, two, you know, maybe how did the Y come and how? Because another word that you use a lot is uh, two things. One one thing that we'll talk about is, is adversity. Because mentioned that um, you've not mentioned the word, but you've mentioned different scenarios that you've had to go through when you've not stopped, but you've learned and then gone over. But then the other thing is also family and family. And you've mentioned a lot, not only your family, but just in general. So how is the, what is the why to you? And what is your, I guess the experience that you've kind of gone throughout and the lessons that you've learned? I know that's a big one. Yeah. So we just probably have to like break it down to like little like subsections. Exactly. So, I started, the top ones. so I started going to the why for summer camp as mm-hmm. soon as I could you know, back in the day before, like you had like online registering for everything. Mm-hmm. I remember my mom would wake up like at five in the morning, the day of the camp registration, you know, there's a line out the door. You're like signing your kids up for summer camp. And, you know, I was, I would be signed up by the entire summer minus like one week of family vacation. Mm-hmm. So I would always like spend my summers at the Y, you know, I went from like kinder, like as long as you can kindergarten all the way up through essentially the SIL program, the junior counselor program. Mm-hmm. And eventually became an employee at 16. Mm-hmm. I have been told it was a no doubt as long as I filled out the application, but I uh, <laughs> can't confirm who my sources said that. Mm-hmm. So, you confirm or deny? <laughs> well, I mean, there's no deny. I mean, I can confirm that somebody <laughs> said it. There's no deny. There's no denying that. And then, how did that feel? How did that feel going to a camp for so long? And then after that, you're now on the other side. I mean, it's definitely like a dream. It's like, it's definitely like a dream. Um, mm-hmm. Luckily I have a friend, Anthony, who kind of did it with me. Mm-hmm. And you know, we were campers together and we were, you know, junior counselors together. Mm-hmm. And then we applied together. And so like when I got the call from some, like, you know, he told me that I got the job. I was, you know, I was excited like that. I remember and then we had a leaders club meeting. Mm-hmm the next day like on a monday night yeah and one of the people was like brooks like i thought you'd be like more excited uh like you got the job and i was like oh well you know like anthony's here like i haven't talked to him like i don't know if he's like i don't know if he's gotten it yet like i don't want to be walking in be like i got the job everybody and then like he didn't get it right like that odd scenario because like it's not like at that time like i had not really developed into the biggest level of confidence that i have now mm-hmm. as you would say uh mm-hmm. i'm I teeter the line of confidence and cockiness Mm -hmm. very tightly (laughs) nowadays. So, but that's important that you not only know that, but you, you acknowledge it because a lot of people 
like see themselves very confident, but they pull back because they don't want to like push someone else. Yeah, I try to like. Actually, we can we can we can yell. Let me say let me say that let me say that one. So coming a counselor, let's see. I was 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So yeah, so I was a counselor for six years. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last year I was on staff, I got a promotion that I thought was overdue mm-hmm. to be on the leadership staff as a programmer, a position that I had kind of asked for the year before mm-hmm. and kind of got turned down, which I really, to this day, I still don't know why I did, but you know, it's water under the bridge now. I still had a good summer. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some, you know, one thing led to another and then I got to essentially go out on top, like on my terms, Mm -hmm. the way I, the way I wanted to, I didn't think it was going to be six years. I definitely thought it was going to be a five year thing, but you know, one thing leads to another, you make a decision Mm -hmm. and it's easy to look back on the decision that why I decided to come back and be like, Oh, like that was so stupid, but I had a good time like anyway. Mm -hmm. And you know, might as well enjoy kind of like the last summer like being like a real child right um i know a lot of people say oh you're like you're done being a child like once you go to college but you know college is kind of just like being like a bigger child exactly you know like no parents everything like that and then i come home every summer so mm-hmm. it's not like i stay in greenville like where i could just let loose everything right but yeah go ahead i would say go ahead i know you probably got some different questions about the why so yeah that mean. I, I think the biggest one is the family aspect because when we work together, we've we've been on both paths and you are starting a whole lot earlier. Mine has broken up a little bit. Um, but there was a time and we all know it where we, a summer where it's the why, like everything, there's ebbs and flows. There's a cycle every couple yeah. of years. There's a cycle like when people graduate from high school to college, college to life, et cetera, et cetera. And it always happens. And when we were entering into the why, the, so the people who were there were finishing their cycle and it was kind of a summer where when people left there was no like system and like process for like okay you do this you do this but then the people who were there like little founding fathers or something and, and, and mothers <laughs> um kind of put stuff together and i feel like that was when it, everything really shifted so like what was that in like your perspective of how really that family aspect came because i feel like before you know it's just like a you go, you clock in, you leave. You go, you clock in. Like it was a job. Of course, yeah. it's so fun. But how, like, what do you think was that that happened? Because I know you were definitely a big influence to that. Okay. So, again, this is probably teetering the line of cockiness and cocky, uh, right. confidence again. So You're year, allowed to be cocky. Do it. This is your podcast. Uh, yeah. So, the year that you're talking about is the summer of 2017. And first, we have to backtrack a little bit. So, when I came in, you had people like like all time greats. I'm actually mm-hmm. working on together, but you're putting like an all time summer camp staff list. Yeah, and sending it out to people to like vote and everything like that, <laughs> like different positions. But you had people like Kiwi and Putt Putt and Lo- and Turtleneck. Yep, Crash. Yeah, crash like Crash. Like you have them like at the and you know they're at the top. Like right. they're the, they're the they're the standard of what you want to be like when you're a counselor. Like you want to be admired by the kids like that much Mm -hmm. so you know 2016 summer you kind of got the feeling that people were you know walking away you you can't you can't work at the y forever Mm -hmm. and you know people have to you know people's jobs take them somewhere else you know some people get teaching jobs or some Mm -hmm. people you know get their or staying in school or like staying at school for the summer Mm -hmm. They're not coming back. So uh, before the summer, like during like training of like the summer of 2017, I had a talk again, like with my friend Anthony and I, you know, I kind of told him that honestly, I don't think I've ever really like told anybody like this before, like besides him. And I was like, this, like, this is the year that like, we're going to take, I was like, this is the year that we're going to take over. Mm -hmm. Like, this is our, like, this is our chance to get to the top. Mm -hmm. And I would honestly say, I saw my opportunity because nobody was like, nobody's at the top. Like you have your, like your ball, like you have like your bosses and everything like that, Mm -hmm. but you need like a leader of the people, like the leader of like, of the staff, like who's the go-to, like who's the go-to person on that. And I was like, I can take this Mm -hmm. like this, like this can be me. 
where do you think that came from? Was it sports? Was it like your, was it just like the breaking point? Not to say breaking point. Like, was that, do you think the time where you kind of felt that rush of confidence and just taking a leap? It kind it could be. So like I was, this was after my freshman year of college. Mm-hmm. So you go from being like the top dog senior year of high school to the absolute bottom of the barrel. <laughs> yeah. College. Mm-hmm. And, but like the why is not structured like that. Because, you know, there's high school and college kids working together. Right. So I honestly really believe I saw the opportunity and I was like, I'm going to be the face. Like, I'm going to be the face. Like, I'm going to step up. And the thing was, is nobody got my, like, nobody got in my way on my path up to the top. Mm-hmm. Now, some people didn't like that once I was at the top, they didn't agree with, like, everything, like I said, and everything that I did. Mm-hmm but they didn't stop me when I was making my way up like the ladder. So that summer we started, you know, we started playing staff sports against uh, Finley Mm -hmm. and camp high hopes. And we also start, I, you know, I decided, I was like, well, why don't I invite everybody over to my house? I have a fire pit, Mm -hmm. you know, hang out. And honestly, it was like a one-time thing. And then people were like, oh, like, hey, we should do another one. And then just so happened, it was like the next week. Mm-hmm. And then we just made it a week. We just made it a weekly thing where either Friday or Saturday, everybody – actually, the first year – well, the first year, we had a rule, and it was like no leadership staff whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And so, like, it was just like we – me and Anthony created that for, like, a safe space right. for all, like, the regular counselors to come. And, like, if they wanted to talk about something – like they didn't have to like look behind their back or Sensor. like, make sure, like yeah, maybe they weren't talking to the walkie talkie to make sure like somebody like overheard them. Mm-hmm. So we wanted to give that place to, to vent for everybody. And, you know, I was more than happy to have like the people like over like at my house, it kind of, you know, if I'm going to be like at the top, you, you got to do like, you got to be Take open to like, to like share your things. Mm-hmm. So like staff sports, I elected myself. I, I you know I picked myself to be the captain. <laughs> Big C. Yeah. So like, you know, that's kind of you know in the sports world that's bad that you picked mm-hmm. yourself to be captain, but nobody else like nobody else was stepping up. Nobody else wanted to be and said they wanted to be captain. I even mm-hmm. asked, I was like, anybody else want? Does anybody want to be captain? And everyone was like, no. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna be the captain then. Mm-hmm. And. You know, one thing led to another. Staff meetings, you know, you, you say clock in, go home, or clock out, go home. Staff meetings, now we're sitting in the parking lot for two hours that's talking true. about a staff meeting that we had that only took one hour, mm-hmm. talking about everything else that's going on. So, me and Anthony started that when we were in Leaders Club before we and that translated into summer camp. So, that was nice. And, you know, 2007, like, after like the end of that year, we thought 2018 summer was going to be the last one. So we we're like, okay, like let's go out and we're just going to have like, we're just going to have a bang. Mm-hmm. We got real t-shirts made for staff sports. We started playing two games a week, uh, having a bonfire staff meeting. So we were together like every day, all mm-hmm. day, like four days a week. So it was really crazy. Uh, and honestly, like that just kind of, I don't know. And then, you know, 2018 happened, like the situation arose. Everybody was like, really like, I, that summer I really felt like embraced by like all the other workers. Mm-hmm. Everybody was like helping me with like, with, with the situation. Throughout the summer, right? Yeah. And like, everybody like had like, like everybody was like wanted to like see me like succeed and like the things I was doing like outside of camp. Mm-hmm. like it was like some personal stuff mm-hmm. and how did that feel oh it felt like it felt great mm-hmm. like the high the you know high high felt amazing you know and the low low felt bad mm-hmm. but like it was really it was honestly like that year probably was like my 2018 was probably my favorite year mm-hmm. you know spending all that time together at the y it was great like you know it definitely like helped me shape like the, the way that i am today is probably because of some of the counselors that i had like mm-hmm. when I was a camper and then the ones I looked up to, like when I was on staff and then when I finally got, <clears throat> like when I finally got the promotion, I was like, I got, I got this, like, I don't have to have someone tell me how to do, like how to do this job. Mm-hmm. Like I've, I've seen, I've, like, I'm like, 
I'm more observant than like what people probably give me credit for. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of being prideful. And I think that's one of the things that's, it's not a matter of being prideful. It's like a matter of you've, you've had experience. It may not be your personal experience, but you've had ex years of experience because you've been there for years and you've seen different people and you kind of pick and choose what you like, what you don't like and kind of form it to be your own. Yeah. So honestly, like I would just say about the why, like the opportunity for someone to get to power, like the opportunity for someone to be the top was there. And I just think I'm the one who got up there and I went and claimed it. Okay. Now I'm going to ask with, and then kind of thank you for sharing that. Cause that's also good. Cause there's some people who've never done anything at the Y or never been there. And if you're watching this, you should definitely, it's, it's, you're not going to get the biggest bucks. You're not going to get the millions, et cetera. But I think what you're going to get is a whole lot worth it. Cause we've talked about it and he briefly mentioned it, but like, again, I've known Brooks. It's 2020, I think before 2010. So it's like at least 10 plus years. And we've talked every year and the past two, three years because of that 2017 year really brought everyone together. And it's more, it turned out from a job to really more of like, I don't even want to say, I, I don't even know how to claim it. Just an act like we would go and it would just be going to hang out with people. But of course we understood we were working and et cetera. But the family that was built and, you know, some people might say, think that he's, cocky for or prideful for saying it but it's really true and I have to say like thank you for doing that but what he really put together was like a I don't want to say like a broken family but it was like a family but pieced together because you had everyone who was very different not only race sex what they what they believe what they didn't believe but you had people who were different but they came together for one thing and they were always there for each other um and one of the things that I didn't notice uh, you being an only child is like you kind of pieced together like brothers and sisters, but I noticed it's not necessarily, and it just came to me when I was here explaining, it's not necessarily you did it for yourself, but you did it for others. Like why, even though there's things that you personally did and you wanted to achieve, but at the end of the day, you were doing it for other people. Why do you think, you know, like why, why? I mean, I've always been like, it's probably the way I was raised. I was always raised helping people. Mm -hmm. And that's what, I mean, that's probably like an underlying theme. Mm -hmm. I definitely like wanted to like, I wanted to get people together because like, I think it's fun. Like, I think it's more fun than just coming home and then being, you know, falling asleep till dinner time, right. waking up, eating, showering and going to bed and then waking up at 6 a.m. the next day to do it all again, mm -hmm. to like have something to like look forward to. And, you know, that's something that the people who came before us like didn't do. Right. So one thing that like I have like on like my legacy with the Y was I was able to like get everybody together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I would, obviously i think everybody understands now like i'm a huge sports guy it was like i literally put together like a team like a hodgepodge team like of people of all different skills that like, we have some people who never played a team sport before mm -hmm. come and like come and try stuff and then we have people like me who have played like have now played like a tons of team sports and everything like that and i'm playing sports that i even though like i never participated in like basketball mm -hmm. or like soccer like I never played on a soccer or a basketball team but like I still go like and I still do like I still do that and you know I think that part of the reason is that people can look at my like competitiveness and, like my drive and, like it inspires them to like want to do like want to do stuff like too like you like the people who are like on the fence about playing or like participating like go out there and, like they see how much fun like I'm having and then at the moment it might not look like I'm having fun especially if I'm losing <laughs> like they see like like how like how my drive is to like compete and like to actually just do something mm -hmm. is hopefully like an inspirational tool to somebody like it influence like hopefully like it influences them but you know if anything it gave the people who worked like the last three summers mm -hmm. a whole lot more like like a bigger group of friends and people that they can call on you know like when they feel bad or you know they can catch up with or anything like like that and you know now everybody ironically enough the people who started in 2017 are now like just finished their first year of college mm -hmm. so you know we all went our different ways and we're all kind of back in wake forest now Roy wake forest raleigh like right. the virus uh pretty sure if the virus isn't here we'd probably be having a bonfire tonight <laughs> on a saturday I mean, honestly yeah. I, I still have the same fire pit i look at it i was like man like we haven't used that in almost a year now so mm -hmm. So, and we'll talk about college, but what is, 
also actually I'll save it. Let's let, let's talk about like college now because you've always been a big ECU person. Yeah. Um, like where did that come from? And and I guess what are what are the, I mean you've gone first of all like you've gone to college. Like I don't want to like downplay that at all because that's a big thing. Like there are people who come. For, I'm from Kenya. There are people who come from different countries and they're like, oh, your parents want you to be a doctor and etc. And college is like this gigantic boss you have to beat at the end of the game that you have to practice x amount of years for so how yeah. was that where did the ecu love come from and, and how's so, experience i'm a second generation ecu alum now mm-hmm. which is actually kind of weird to say <laughs> i need to start introducing myself as an ecu fan. <laughs> exactly uh, so my dad graduated back in the late 70s mm-hmm. and he graduated from the business school Actually, fun fact, it took him five years, and I got out in four, so I beat my dad in college. And so he was a – and my mom went to ECU her junior year. She went to Peace College, now William Peace University, back when Peace College was a two-year school hmm. and only all girls. I did not know that. Yeah. So she got her associate's degree from Peace, transferred to ECU to start her – bachelor degree and then transferred after her junior year to in graduated from nc state but you wouldn't know that my mom graduated from nc state because she doesn't have anything that says NC state. <laughs> that's true um so my dad was always a big my dad my dad was always just a big ecu fan and you know we went to the games like when we were kids eventually we got season tickets for football i was just always raised you know ecu like ecu luckily for me like and then like my cousins Four of them went to ECU. Actually, mm-hmm. well, three on one side, two on the other. So five of them went to ECU. So like, it's just kind of like in the family. You know, we're all Raleigh people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the biggest thing, like, I got from, like, being, like, a Raleigh kid, mm-hmm. uh, I'd say, like, senior year of high school, like, junior year, like, freshman year of college was, was, like, oh, like, you just didn't get into, like, UNC or NC State. I was, like, no, like, I – did not want to go to Chapel Hill or NC State. Mm-hmm. I was just raised that way that I, I don't want to go to either one of those schools. Right. No matter what, he's like, oh, it's like people was like, you can still be an ECU fan and go to like UNC. I was like, no, like nah. I, like I don't. <laughs> and like honestly, like side note, the people who wear like UNC and NC State stuff on campus are like, you're you're at the wrong school. <laughs> like, hey, you know what? Here's a, here's a positive. He's like, oh, like I'm a Carolina basketball fan. I was like, okay, well, you go to EC, like, you can be a Carolina basketball fan. Just don't wear Carolina basketball <laughs> stuff to, like, class and walking around campus. I was like, oh, well, you know, like, I applied to Carolina. I was like, oh, that's great. So you're saying that someone told you that you weren't good enough and you're still, like, it's like a, it's like a, girl, it's like a girlfriend, boyfriend thing. Mm-hmm. You get dumped by person A and you still just follow them around. Mm-hmm. What is Even it, though, doing uh, insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting yeah. a different result? Like, honestly, that's my take about people wearing different things on campus. Mm-hmm. Uh, but college, like, NRCA definitely prepared me a whole lot. I feel like complete, the reason why I did so well in college after, like, freshman, like, after the first semester mm-hmm. was probably because I went to NRCA. I think anybody can struggle with the switch from high school to college first semester, just getting used to things and how, like, the system works. Mm-hmm. So, like, I did not do good, like, my first semester. Like, I only had, like, a 2.7 GPA. But then, like, the next, like, sophomore and junior year, I made the honor roll all four semesters those two years and then got a little bit of senior-itis fall semester this year. Mm-hmm. Not going to lie. I got, my first, I got my first D ever, like, in anything. Mm-hmm. But luckily, I did, like, a great replacement. Class, I took an extra class this semester mm-hmm. to great replace the D. And I actually got an A in that class, so it did went, that went well. And then my last semester of college, I actually had my highest GPA ever, and I had a three point eight in the semester. So I was able to be on the dean. I was I was able to be on the dean's list my last semester of college. What does that mean, by the way? That's like a general question for me. Like I, I've I've never Googled it, even though I've always told myself I'm going to Google it. Yeah. So like it like you know it works different like all of the universities. So like uh-huh. ECU has the honor roll, which is anywhere for like anyone with a three 3.0 to a 3.4 semester GPA mm-hmm. uh, you get an email like honor roll you just get like an email saying like oh congratulations on like being on the honor roll everything like that Dean's list 
uh, I believe you get to go to a din- like you get to go to like a dinner like in the student center, mm-hmm. and then like the chancellor's list for like anybody with like a four point like semester average, which is like all like regular A's like no A minuses. I think to get a, to go to a dinner at the chancellor's house. Mm-hmm. So it's like just like a little bit of an accomplishment. Gotcha. Like it's something to like strive for. But it should be everything. Like uh yeah, you know it's just a goal, and you know something like one thing like. I kind of have to tell people, you know, you just be like, just because you set a goal doesn't mean you're going to achieve it every time. Like my goal was after freshman year to make the honor roll every semester. And then, you know, senior year and Christmas time, get my grades back. And I didn't make the honor roll. And then, you know, like my parents were upset. It was like, well, your goal was to make the honor roll. I'm like, yeah. I said, also my goal was to play college. Like my, also my goal was to play college football. Like I didn't mean, like I didn't meet it so but i think one thing people have to learn with is it's okay not to achieve your goals every single time as long as you like keep striving like i didn't let my goal i i didn't let myself tank after i did make the honor roll one semester i the next semester i jumped the honor roll and went to the dean's list so essentially like i made up for it but that's one thing like people always like have to strive or strive with you know and you know a goal setting comes a lot from like sports you have to see like being a like I'm going to be a coach one day in something and you have to be realistic sometimes. And, you know, you might not win every single game, even though you want to, but you know, you can't go and beat the number one team ranked in the state or in the nation mm-hmm. every single time. This is not going to happen. You know, some teams are better than other teams. It's just a fact, but you have things that you can look f- like you have things that you can like try to achieve. Like, Oh, you know, our goal is to try to put up 10 goals like against the number one team mm-hmm. or our goal is to not take any penalties. And, you know, you take, you take two penalties in a game against the number one team in the nation. Okay. Well, you only took two penalties against the number one team in the nation, or, mm-hmm. you know what, you didn't score 10 goals, but you got eight. Right. So it's being okay with setting a goal, but not if it doesn't happen. Yeah. It's okay. With destroy the world. You don't have to, you don't have to achieve it every single time. As long as you don't get, just because you, you can't let it tank yourself. You can't tank, you can't let it like drag you down right. that you didn't achieve your goal. You know, you're going to have another, you're going to have another opportunity again, sometime mm-hmm. not, not be against like the same team or like at the same job or anything like that. Well, you have another opportunity. you have another opportunity to do it. So do you think, and the next thing is, is not necessarily fast forwarding it, but you've gone, you played, um, I'd like for you to definitely touch on that briefly before we talk about, you know, COVID graduation, but how was playing? I got to see, first of all, he wrote us, he would ask me to come to Greenville a lot and I, and I'd say no, I'd say no, just because I was focusing on other things. And like this past year, I was finally able to, which I am very glad that I was able to come there from August off of a, off of a random conversation, a random dinner to, to this year. Um, but it's also good because like same thing with Ashley, if, you've been, if we talk about it briefly in our podcast, like having friends who support you for your goals and know, like, I don't want to say the barriers, but know like the limits. So for example, you're a sports person. If you're playing lacrosse, I'm not going to ask you, Hey Brooks, like, let's go eat dinner. You're going to be like, no, because, and even though it's such a small thing, like you look at it and it's like, well, this person doesn't necessarily want me to focus kind of like what I want to do. Um, but one thing that I feel like we've always had, even for our other friends we hang out with, is like the respect for each other for whatever that we're doing. Even though it may not be in our field, we still have that respect of like, okay, that person has to do this, and then they'll come. So, I guess what was like a good memory of of, of lacrosse being able to play for that as a, at a collegiate level? Yeah. So for everyone who doesn't know, I played lacrosse. I played lacrosse at ECU. Um, it is club lacrosse, but it's the highest level that ECU has to offer. It's in a league called the MCLA, which is the Men's Collegiate Lacrosse Association. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is basically for all the schools who don't have a Division I lacrosse team. There's only like 68 Division I lacrosse teams in the entire nation. Mm -hmm. Almost everywhere has a club team. So, like, that's what we play in. And, you know, we play the schools that are big names, like NC State, South Carolina, Clemson, Wake Forest that don't have division one teams and we practice we practice four days a week travel every weekend or have a home game Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, it's, you know, it's taxing. Like you have to be like, you have, it's not like you like adult rec league where you just come up and you play right? everything like that. You know, uh, we pay our way to play. Like, you know, you pay dues like a fraternity or sorority mm-hmm. or like being part of like a club, like after school and high school. Right. But it's all for people who love playing lacrosse and still want to play like at the college level. And, you know, a lot of people transfer who play like division one or division two don't really like all the, uh, don't realize like how much of a job mm-hmm. one sports is with like, you know, the 5 a.m. weights, morning practice, class, afternoon practice, and who just still love lacrosse and they still want to play lacrosse and they, they just want to do practice and playing, which is completely fine. That, you know, if that's what people want to choose, they have every right to do it. So my favorite, I don't know, my favorite, I mean, there's probably two. There's one like on the field and one off the field moment. Mm-hmm. Probably off the field moment was being – selected to run the social media mm-hmm. my junior year so I ran the ECU uh, lacrosse media for my junior and senior year of college and our Instagram followers doubled mm-hmm. and we gained over 200 Twitter followers it went since like since I t- or over the time that I took over mm-hmm. which is really like a proud accomplishment right and you get to interact with some really cool people uh you have like, a brotherhood. In lacrosse, like in the lacrosse community mm-hmm. who like I could say a name and then everybody else in the room would have no idea, but like, Oh, like we DM, like we DM'd each other, even though like I wasn't representing myself, I was representing the team. Like I was talking to him. Like, I met a, uh, I met a broadcast. So like ESPN has like groups of broadcasters and like, you have like the a block, the B block and like the C block. So like, if you're showing three games at one time, you know, the top level premier game is going to get the a block. Right. And then like, you know, the game on ESPN two gets the B block. And then the one on ESPN, U gets the C block, like the mm-hmm. commentator team. And the guy who does the play by play for the A block was announcing an ECU basketball game uh, before the lacrosse season started. And I recognized him. Mm-hmm. I was like, I think that's a niche Shroff. And so I went up and talked to him after the game. I was like, excuse me, like, are you a niche Shroff? He was like, yes. And I was like, Oh, like I play lacrosse here at ECU. He's like, Oh, okay. And then we had like a 10 minute conversation. Then, you know, the next day we added each other on LinkedIn. So that was really cool. Mm-hmm. I'd probably say like that was a bit one of like the good, like off the field moments on the field. I'd have to say junior year. It was the last game of the year. Um, and this was at a time I was playing a uh, lawn stick midi. So that is like, I'm playing with like a, I'm playing with a stick. That's essentially like, the same height that I am. Mm-hmm. It's, it's huge. Yeah. And I had never, I've never done it before. The, before that season the coach at the time asked me to switch that to that position mm-hmm. he said i'll get more playing time that way so i was like of course like i do it and we had the best face-off kid i've ever seen in my entire life he actually got third team all-american that year mm-hmm. and we had a face-off play like you know one of our starting defensemen went down with an injury so the starting lsm moved down to his spot <laughs> and then i took the lsm spot so mm-hmm. i was getting a ton of reps that game and we were playing Elon and we had like Garrett's the name of the faceoff guy. And he was just torching this kid mm-hmm. every time. And at halftime, like coach drew up a play on the clipboard and was like, Brooks, you know, I want you to take two steps with your man and then just cut straight to the goal. And mm-hmm. You're going to be open. And we started doing it. And eventually like after like the third time that we did it, um, Garrett passed me the ball and I was standing like right on the crease mm-hmm. and I was able to catch it with my long pole and just dump it in the net. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, everybody like started celebrating everything like that. Like it was wild. Like it was wild. How did that feel? Uh, like how did that, that feel of scoring a goal and like knowing exactly where it, like, it's not, you didn't just walk on the field and you became this, like you, you'd be able to make that shot yeah. with amazing accuracy. Like, I'm, I'm like, I, one thing's for, I have like probably the slowest shot on the team, hands down. And I'm nowhere near the best out of the group of guys that was out there but everybody was just like so excited for me because like they like they saw like how much like I worked like at practice and like how much like I try to do everything that like they do Mm -hmm. even though like I might not be able to do every like perfectly like everything I just tried to like work on my craft and like just getting like the simple basic stuff down because the game really does switch when you go from high school to college a whole lot like high school I was the starter I was the guy you know, started every game mm-hmm. all two years that I played varsity lacrosse to go to like, you know, 
this was like my first like real big opportunity to like really like play like it was junior year mm-hmm. and sure enough like I remember like I could draw the play up on a clipboard like right now mm-hmm. if I had to and like everybody you know everybody like huh, like everybody like like the six of us who were on the field like all like celebrated then and then like I ran to the sidelines and then like I did like a big like jump up like side bump like on the side I like I jumped like so high <laughs> like you like sometimes you just like you just take flight like the adrenaline's pumping like you're taking flight mm-hmm. and someone on the bench was like holy cow did Brooks just score and he's like yeah he's like oh dude he's like let's go like this game's over <laughs> ironically enough we ended up winning that game by like eight I think, but I do remember that like the goal that I scored was like technically the game winning goal. Right. Like that was goal number five and they only had four. Ah, uh, so that was like, mm-hmm. not necessarily that I won the team the game, but it's something that like I remember and like technically it, like in the book, it does say like game, like technically it will be like the game winning goal, mm-hmm. but you know, it's just something to, it was really nice to like see everything, Like you had like, worked so hard for like, three years to like see something benefit like that. And, and now I remember we, we spoke and it's like, Oh, like, Oh, when you're going to school and we were like, Oh, what, what would happen if you, you know, would you ever think about graduating online or et cetera, then everything happened. So like, how, how did that necessarily impact you or, you know, everybody says like, you know, it's your senior year, the year, like yeah. how did everything kind of happen and impact that? And like, how is that, you know, how's that been for you and how have you been able to overcome it? Yeah. So I was on spring break when they announced first that they were just extending spring break for another week. Right. So it was like, okay, like another week of spring break, they're going to let this thing die down. Like, you know, being oblivious to the situation, I was like, oh, okay. Exactly. I'm gonna all here. There's, there's going to get this under control. You just got an extra week of spring break. You get to help or do whatever. So, and I was coaching at NRCA that week and because I like I want to go back and I, I love coaching and it's the same coach who was my coach in high school still yeah. there and it was a Thursday game and they asked me was like hey like if you want to come with us to Greensboro oh you can I was like awesome like I am and help coach the defense because he uh, coach Jay is only by himself right now he doesn't have an assistant mm-hmm. so it's nice for him to focus on the offense and our take the defense and focus with them and like we're getting ready to like leave and like coach Jay's like hey like the team that we're supposed to play Friday like the team tomorrow like already canceled yeah. like, like you're like we're not playing any, like we're not playing any more sports and I was like oh okay like this could be like the last game for a while knowing that it would be the last game of the season for those guys and I hate it for them almost worse than me mm-hmm. so I was like okay like you know let's go out we won the game by one which is great and then coming back you know I think I get an email and it was like, hey, uh, ECU is going to shift to online indefinitely. And I was like, oh, geez. Like, well, indefinitely means you don't know how long. Right. And I was just like, I put on Twitter, I was like, I really hope this only lasts for like a week. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it's whatever. Well, it didn't. And at first, when like all the online stuff started, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to try to do this at home. But like, if it doesn't work, I'm going to go back to Greenville and do it. Mm-hmm. Well, everything like school wise, like in Greenville, like shut down. So like you couldn't go to the library, anything like that. So it'd just be like in your apartment. Mm-hmm. And my mom had started working from home, obviously. And we didn't know if like we could do like both of us like being at home. Like I'm doing work, she's doing work. You know, is the Wi Fi going to hold up for all of us? Right. But, you know, we made it work. And, you know, she went to the beach a little bit and worked from her beach house. I stayed here. And one thing led to another and then, you know, one month and then two months. And then you're like, I'm not going back to school. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, graduation happened or they announced that graduation will be online. So it kind of like shell shocks you a little bit. Like, wow. Like I didn't get to feel like I didn't, like, I didn't get to have my senior night for senior year of mm-hmm. lacrosse. Um, I was on spring break when this happened. Mm-hmm. So, like I really didn't get to like say like goodbye to like any of my friends from lacrosse mm-hmm. or anybody else for that matter. So I really hate that 
that's probably like the thing like I hate the most was I didn't get to say goodbye to everybody. Mm-hmm. Even though like I know that like RC, a lot of them again, there would probably be a, like a couple that I don't ever see again. And I hate that. But like, there's no way that I think that like all 40 of us are going to be like back together again, like at an alumni weekend, or, like an alumni weekend, like, you know, down the road mm-hmm. or anything like that. It, it just probably be too hard to be too hard to do. Like, you don't know where everyone's going to be in five years. So, but someone told me, I started working out with this group called F3, which is a faith of fellowship and family, maybe not in that order, mm-hmm. but they work out at 530 every morning outdoors and it's only guy or only men. Mm-hmm. And I'm the young, at the time I was the youngest one out there. One of my people one of my friends who I met early on and uh, at ECU who's actually an academic advisor for a different department uh it was like hey like why don't you come out to like the middle school like at 5 30 and I'm like oh uh, well he called me out on Twitter so I was like oh Shoot. all right well like I'm not a chicken so uh-huh. I was like I'll go and I you know I did their workout and I probably started I did that for about a month and then school got canceled so mm-hmm. like it was really fun like you know it was really great to have like well, I guess like older men I guess like in my life like someone who's like not like people who are like a little bit younger than my dad's age mm-hmm. kind of like as like I guess like little mentors mm-hmm. kind of like that you know like they see like how I'm doing everything like that this is really great like commodity and fellowship it's like your own personal like executive board and kind of like that because you know like my dad's like in Wake Forest but like you know these guys like checking out obviously they're nowhere like near my dad mm-hmm. like in anything but it's just nice to have like someone who's like not around your age, like checking up on you and like looking, like asking you like what you're doing, like, you know, going to eat with mm-hmm. stuff like that. And he told me, he said, Hey, your room was like, finish is finished no matter what. And I was kind of thinking about that when I was watching the graduation video the other day, you know, it was, I didn't hear my name called. I didn't expect to, but you know, and they conferred uh, my degree. My diploma will hopefully get here in July. And we're have a nice frame picked out for it. I mean, it's not going to say like COVID-19 on there. It's still going to say Bachelor of Science, no matter what. So that's the thing you guys got to, you know, take with a grain of salt. It's unlucky that I was the one or like I'm a part of like the people who like this happened to. I really like, I wouldn't wish it on anybody else. Like I wouldn't like, Oh, like why well, couldn't it have been like this, 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 and this, but you know, it's a learning experience. And you know, when people ask you now, like what's like the greatest adversity that you find to face, you know, COVID-19 like college could have a really good run. I hate it. I think I honestly hate it more for like the high school seniors more than the college seniors, because I feel like high school graduation is somewhat of like a bigger deal for some people. Uh, You know, not everybody goes to college and there's nothing wrong with that. But a lot of like, a lot of people graduate, a lot of people graduate from high school, more statistically more people graduate from high school than college. So it's a bigger deal. And like, I think I'm an outlier when I say this, but a lot of people say that the people you meet in college are going to be like your friends for life. And there's definitely some people in college that like I will be friends like for long term, but on like, I'm still really great friends with my friends I made from high school. Uh, we still have like a group chat and we talk like all the time in that. And like when we're all at home, like we all like every Thanksgiving, like in Christmas, like we try to do something together with everybody. So. I mean, I don't know if like the high school seniors now are like, Oh, like, well, like you, y'all are really about to go like your different ways. Like more people go different from high school than people from college into like Mm post-grad. So, and thank you for sharing that. Um, And I feel like this one's a good one because it's like, again, the whole purpose of this is not to, oh, I want to interview like Bill Gates and da, 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 da. And like, yeah, that'd be cool. But we all, I think the thing is, it's like everyone in your own network that you have you have some like heavy hitters, some just like people who have gone through things that you'll never go that you'll never get to go through. 
like what you've gone through and there are people who there are people like who can be kind of like that lighthouse to you and i feel like that's the really cool thing about this because it's just hearing about people's lives and what they've had to go through to get to where they are and really opens up the light because someone may just think like oh brooks is a cocky person or he's like oh he's just really prideful but they may not know that you're the only child and you've had to go overcome with being kind of the overlooked and overbooked i mean go overlooked to not overbooked but go from a point to where I don't want to say you're at the bottom, but it's going at the point where you've had to fight in other places where people easily just walked in. But it's not like you fought and then you stopped. It's like you fought, then you realized you got to where you wanted. Now you wanted to fight again. Like there's that adversity I keep noticing where it's like you you wanted something, you got it. Now I want something. You like you keep going. Um, yeah. And I guess lastly, I just want to say is I guess you know I'm going to be respectful of your time, but. What are just some words of advice of, I don't want to say youth, but just words of advice of other people. And um, it's a twofold question. Like what are some words of advice for everyone watching this from you and what or who influenced you to influence other people? Yeah. So like on like, on like the topic of like, you know, fighting it's, you know, it has been like a, a really, essentially it really is like an underdog story, like in sports, mm-hmm. like, you know, you go from all like, elementary school you know always last pick in football like recess because you know he's the shortest he's the shortest like he's the shortest person he's you know too small to play everything like that and then you know you start working you know then you go to tackle football in school and then you know now you got the student section chanting your name after a play and like lacrosse at ecu freshman year practice squad and then senior year exec board so it's never like you can't like I'm not saying you can be sad. Like you can be satisfied with what you have, but you can always want, you can always want more. And I would definitely say, is it like a piece of advice? Like there's nothing wrong with being happy with where you're at. Like right now, if that's like where you are, but you can always, you can always get better. That's what I would always say. Uh, I really like to think like my college story can like, is like wrapped up like this um going into college definitely an underdog because you're, you're coming from private small private school to a large public institution you go from being on the practice squad to being on the exec like being on the exec board and you go from nobody knowing who you are as a freshman to a senior year everybody knows what you, who you are based on what you wear going to sporting events. Uh, because I got famous wearing overalls <laughs> on canvas in a face mask. That's going to be the picture of the thumbnail. Ha! <laughs> that would be a good one. You may have to get the pictures from Savannah. I'll give yeah. shout out to Savannah. She's good. And you know, I, it's like a transition story. I was like my story, like in college and honestly, probably, you can count the years like at the way you can actually really count like the years like the high school, like high school to now is the story about how the under, like how an underdog became a favorite, Mm -hmm. you know, like people now expect, like people now expect me to succeed. People now want me on their team, even if I'm not good because they know how hard, like I'm going to try my advice to anyone, like in anyone in college right now would be make sure you're, implemented into a group like social groups time wisely spend your time wisely for sure there's nothing wrong with playing video games at night just make sure you have your school stuff done like before you do it Mm -hmm. have like routine like routine schedule i would say put your alarm clock like far away from you so you'd never like oversleep a class (laughs) it's like one of the things you know have people over like in your dorm or like your apartment you don't have to be doing anything you just hang out with people High school wise, I would say, don't be afraid to like try new things. You'll go for a different sport that you didn't think you were going to. Uh, anything like that. Like honestly, uh, high school, I reached. I, I wanted like so tenth grade. I wanted mm-hmm. to be an athletic trainer because I knew I wasn't probably going to get to play professional sports. And I was like, athletic trainers are on the sideline. They go to all the like they're with the team all the time. And then I got into journalism my junior year of high school. And I was like, I can be a sports broadcaster. I was like, I want to be a sports broadcaster instead. 
And that's the window why I'm going to school. So you can't be afraid to change your mind about things. I'm still mm-hmm. going to work in the sports world. I'm still going to be a top sports broadcaster someday. Don't know if that's going to be five years down the road, 10 or 20, something like that. But, you know, one day it's going to happen. I'll be on TV calling a game. You know, my job with the Tobs is just like the first step in a grand picture. You know, it's the start of a new chapter. So you can't be afraid to uh, put yourself out there for anybody. That's how I got my internship at the radio station. That's how I got so many connections in the athletic department at ECU. Just because I put myself out there, made myself known. And I wasn't afraid of getting rejected. But I kind of wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to. I tried to alleviate the process of that. Perfect. And that's a good that's a good little segment there. That's and it's good because like a lot of people are afraid of rejection and like from whip from girls, guys, anything like jobs. Oh, yeah, dude, like, about girls, I'm I'm terrified of getting rejected. <laughs> <laughs> it's a completely different story for a completely different podcast. Exactly. So before I hand it off to you to kind of say um, where people can find you online, I have to say thank you. I definitely this past how it happened, it was August when camp was finishing and finished out a week or a week or two weeks earlier, uh, before kind of everything else, you know, kind of summer camp actually ends. And I remember him and um, Harper and Brandon from, from ECU, because that's everybody pretty much goes to ECU at, at, at who, who's coming from the Y, kind of came and we're all having dinner at Fiesta. And, you know, someone just says, oh, it'd be cool to go to ECU for the weekend. And they're like, yeah, what are you doing this weekend? Someone says, nothing. How about you, Sushi? Nothing. How about you? Nothing. And then Brooks goes, okay, all right, right now. So who's coming? So then that happened to kind of coming pretty much like once or twice every single month and 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 leading up to an amazing workout. So I have to say thank you because personally for me, like I spent <clears throat> I spent graduating high school after 2014. That's when like I, I was cool with the jocks, the soft, like I was cool with all these different type of people, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So like after when they all left and I was at Wake Jack for a little bit, like I went to just like now, like I just went into complete shutout mode, not on purpose, but everybody left. So there was a lot of things, I don't want to say missed out on because things happen for a reason, right? So it's like, there were a lot of things that I did not do and some of it I didn't do on purpose. Um, I think it's, yeah, I'm still recording. I didn't do and I didn't do on purpose, um, but is this still recording? Can you, uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. You also, you, fr- you froze for a little bit. Internet connection dropped, so that's okay. But pretty much just wanted to say, I just bought a new Wi-Fi adapter for my computer. Um, just thank you. I mean, honestly, like coming out these past August till now, I'm really happy that I did it all. This, or not all, like being able to do everything that we did the past couple months, because if you think about it, if I waited, wanted to wait until now, that would never happen. And I've honestly, I learned so much because like I was only used to like one path, like being able to go somewhere and people don't know who you are, being able to learn from other people, talk to different people, being able to be introduced to the, the lacrosse family and all his other friends. Um, and really just being able to see him in his element where it's like, he's like going somewhere and you see one of your friends in a completely different element that you're used to. And you just see them owning it, not owning it like it's all theirs, but owning it like they are who they are. And it's the same person that they brought from Wake Forest and being able to spread that and being able to do that. So I just want to say thank you for that. Um, Cause this honestly, the past six months have just been amazing. Six, seven, but whatever it is, I've just been amazing as I've personally grown. And you've definitely been a big part of that. Also a good friend of ours, David. Um, and so, yeah, so thank you for that. So the next thing, I guess, as we finish out, where can people find you? Socials, drop them below. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'm on Facebook just as Brooks Hill, mm-hmm. nothing fancy. Uh, Twitter is over the hill 98 and Instagram is king of the hill 98. Mm-hmm. Just a little switch of the words right there because king of the hill was already taken on Twitter. Mm-hmm. So I had to make something a little bit different, but that's where people can find me. I uh, post hot takes about sports and by hot takes, I mean my biased opinion about the teams that I support, which is basically ECU and the Carolina Hurricanes. Mm-hmm. Anything else I find that's funny, I would say that's where, uh, that's where everybody can find me. 
But uh, yeah, I would say thanks for uh, having me on. It was a great opportunity to share some stories, uh, tell some stuff that I, I really haven't talked about in a while. And hopefully uh, people can understand what I was trying to get through. Perfect. And that is it.